uh, a software engineer and a data scientist in a number of roles before joining AWS. Um, at AWS, I help out our research customers um, build out their workflows, their genomics workflows, uh, workloads on AWS, uh, help them scale out their science um, and get, get to the results a lot faster. So um, this talk is going to be a little bit more broad uh, about just um, AWS practices in general, about how you can uh, control security on your data and your assets, but also and also control your costs as well. So a uh, quick show of hands, uh, how many of you know what AWS is? OK, how many of you have like, actually been inside the console and built stuff on AWS? All right, um, some, some hands are down. So I'm going to go whiz by really fast through the next four slides just to make sure everyone's on the same baseline. So what's AWS? Um, at its core, AWS is, uh, is four key services. There is uh, compute, so EC2 instances. Think of these as Linux servers in the cloud. Um, there's storage, uh, EBS volumes. Think of those like hard drives. Uh, S3 buckets, these are object stores. Um, databases, so these are uh, uh, like uh, relational databases or uh, non-relational databases like um, uh, DynamoDB. Um, and then also there's security and access management. So um, authentication, authorization, um, for all of your resources in AWS. Um, we have a very large global footprint. We have currently 22 uh, global regions with uh, 69 availability zones. So this means we're, uh, we're all the way around the world. Um, and we have a large, uh, if you want to deploy an application, you can do so uh, in minutes in AWS. And so what that means is applications you develop in AWS, uh, you, you, we provide you with um, availability, scalability, um, and security and reliability and, uh, and performance across the board. And because of our economies of scale, we provide low costs uh, to you, our customers. And so you can think of computing, uh, cloud computing in AWS as uh, a utility. So think of how you get power to your home. Um, you buy AWS resources on demand. Uh, you pay as you go, you pay only for what you use, and you also provision resources uh, to fit the, the, the applications that you want to deploy. So some of the common questions that we get um, supporting our customers, uh, no, especially in the nonprofit and academic space is, how do I keep my resources secure? Um, how do I know that my resources are compliant? Or how do I maintain the compliance needs uh, to suit my application, to suit my organization? And also, uh, how do I keep my costs under control? So um, why don't we talk, talk through some of those things. So let's talk about security and compliance. Um, for us at AWS, security is, we call it job zero. It's very important to, to us because it's very important to our customers. And so with AWS, we have um, out of the box, we, we have over 50 global uh, compliance certifications and accreditations. And so you as AWS customers inherit uh, that uh, through our services. And we have infrastructure that is built with the best um, uh, security. Well, we have, we have it, our infrastructure is built with security best practices that are meant to fit our most security sensitive customers. And so you, you inherit that as well. And we have a lot of tools and mechanisms for you to impl implement uh, security needs for your applications. And so um, we at AWS have what's called a shared uh, responsibility model. Um, and what that means uh, in particular is AWS is uh, responsible for security of the cloud. So we're talking about all of the, uh, the physical infrastructure, uh, the actual servers, the data centers, uh, the, uh, the, the hardware. And you as customers are responsible for security in the cloud. So um, all the data that you put in there, um, applications, uh, operating systems uh, that you put on in instances to, uh, to run your applications. So if we dig, dig into this a little bit deeper, what that means is anything below the, the, the hypervisor level, that's what we're, um, we're nominally responsible for. So physical access to the data center, uh, making sure that uh, the hardware is up to date um, and 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 um, operationally high performant. 
Um, as far as uh, uh, some of this compliance um, and uh, uh, certifications that we have, we um, there's a lot of them. Um, you can actually go to uh, our website to, to get the full list of them, but a couple of the call out in the healthcare space, um, we have over 100 HIPAA eligible services. Um, so you can build out HIPAA, HIPAA eligible, HIPAA compliant applications. Um, uh, a lot of ISO uh, compliance on there, NIST, and uh, uh, if you work in the United States, FedRAMP um, compliance as well. Um, so when we talk about um, security, you want to be able to implement a couple of things. Um, you want to know, you want to control where your data is. Oh, whoa, Ooh, going fast, wrong button. Uh, you want to control uh, where your data is uh, and, and who can access it uh, to it. You want to have implement fine-grained controls over the individual resources, individual uh, objects. Uh, you want to reduce the, the risk uh, uh, to, your, to your security through uh, automation methods. Um, and you want to know that um, all of our AWS services uh, integrate with um, also security tools and, and best practices. So what are some of the options that we have? So we have a lot of um, uh, tools uh, within uh, tools and services and capabilities within uh, the AWS portfolio. Um, and I'll just cover a couple of these. Like for, it all starts with identity and access management. This is how you control um, uh, who gets in, who can log into your account and what, um, uh, what access they have to any individual resources. Uh, all the way out to uh, incident response um, mechanisms. So like detecting uh, intrusion into uh, your resources and looking at how your research, uh, resources can change over time. And I'll get, get into this uh, later, actually probably in the next slide. So um, one, of the, the, one of the coolest resources that, I, um, that we have is uh, something called AWS Config. And so this is a, um, uh, this is a service that allows you to track how your resources change over time. Um, and can you can set up rules in AWS Config to, uh, to notify you of when your uh, resources go out of compliance. Um, and these rules can match uh, uh, your compliance needs uh, uh, for uh, your specific applications. So this is a, this is a timeline. Uh, oops, <laughs> wrong button. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, this is actually what a, ti a, a timeline trace. Of, uh, of a resource, and you can see in, uh, in green, this is when it was in compliant, and there were a couple of changes at this mark here, uh, and then when it goes out of compliance, it goes red, um, and you can, you can dig into this and see uh, uh, what the change was, uh, who, who made the change, um, and uh, you can uh, 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 then go in and, and ameliorate it um, as necessary. <clears throat> so, Let's, let's talk about governance and cost. Um, so, as I said before, AWS is pay as you go, um, and uh, one of the important things about that is the more you use, the less you end up paying because of uh, volume discounts. Um, and so, and also you can you can even pay less if you uh, reserve capacity. Um, so, if you pay upfront. Um, one of the one of the ways to take uh, advantage of those volume discounts, or uh, ensuring that you have enough utilization to uh, to warrant a reserve instance, is to um, is to group all of your organizations together, or all a, a lot of accounts together. Um, we have, in my experience out on the in the field, I talk with a lot of universities, and um, what they see, especially in the central IT, IT department, there's a lot of researchers out there that have spun up their own accounts. And so they want to try to get a hold of all of that, um, uh, all of that utilization, and put it under uh, one umbrella. It's it's beneficial for the university. It's also ben beneficial for uh, individual researchers um, using uh, using AWS. Um, and so one of the mechanisms for that is to use AWS organizations. So you can have an organization that uh, organizational hierarchy that matches your uh, physical organization. So you can have a master payer account. Uh, at the university level, and then your individual researchers, researcher accounts can be member 
accounts in, within that organization. And one of the um, major benefits of doing that is to have uh, this concept of cons uh, consolidated billing, which means that there is one account that is responsible for all the bills. Um, and all of the member accounts will feed into that account. All the billing, all of the budgets that are associated with member accounts will feed up into that um, uh, master payer. And that master payer uh, can also go dig in and, um, and, and kind of group accounts uh, by their particular function. And we can get into some of the architectures that you can uh, build onto this uh, in a minute. Um, so what does that mean? You can, you can have an organizational structure that looks like this. You can have a master account that, um, that splits out organizational units by, um, uh, by your, say, your environment lifecycle. You could have an organizational grouping for your production workloads, uh, your development workloads, your test workloads. Or you can go by uh, individual projects. So master pair account, uh, research project one, two, three. Uh, it's really up to you um, uh, and your uh, institution on how you want to do that. Um, another benefit of going to, uh, with, of using AWS organizations is you, you as say, IT directors, um, CIOs, CTOs, you can implement uh, service policies that control what kind of subs services and the amount of services that you can launch um, in within member accounts so you uh, you can control um, <clears throat> you can control the the magnitude of resources uh, also the types of resources that individual accounts can use and that's another way to keep control of uh, of what of costs in the overall um, in your overall AWS organization um, here's another one if you wanted to do uh, a hybrid structure as well so <clears throat> um, one of the probably the most important tools you should be you should familiarize yourself with are, is the AWS billing and cost management um, service. So this is your window into your bill, uh, into your utilization within your account. Um, what you can do here is um, there's a number of places in here. So there's a cost explorer that allows you to dig into uh, individual facets of your account. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so you can uh, the cost explorer can help you break down like where are your bills coming from um, uh, from specific services. So like how many EC two, how much is coming from EC two, how much is coming from storage, how much is coming from uh, other things like SageMaker or databases. Um, and uh, let's go back four. And then what you can also do is you can uh, generate a cost and usage report. And so these things are, um, these things apply, uh, they can give you granular views into, uh, it's basically what you would, what you would see if you were using the cost explorer, but this is a, uh, a more automated way that you can get a tabular form of, of data that comes out that you can, um, <clears throat> that you can um, send off to your billing department or, or look for, uh, to, to do anal analysis of like where 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 is my spend going in, in my account, um, and then another tool that we have is the AWS Trusted Advisor. This is kind of a more uh, uh, this is this is something that you should probably check on a very regular basis. Um, this gives you a broader view of like um, what kinds of things I could do to uh, optimize my costs in my re uh, in my account um, or uh, is uh, optimized performance of my resources, uh, security, tolerance, um, am, am I hitting any sort of uh, service limits? So how many EC2 instances I've spun up? What type? Uh, is it getting close to my uh, to, to the number that we uh, have by default? Should I uh, call up a customer support, maybe get that um, uh, raised if, if necessary? Um, and then, so we can talk a little bit more about the cost store, but this is this is a, think of it like your cost dashboard for your account. Uh, you can go in here, you can uh, drill down into individual um, uh, individual services, individual uh, go, go by month. And actually, one of the important things you can also set is a budget. Um, and uh, you can also set budgets and budget alarms. So probably the first thing you ever wanna do 
uh, when you start up a new account is to create a budget alarm of uh, that triggers at like $10 or something like that. Just to make sure that nobody is like, um, has hacked your account um, or is, or you're not, um, you're not running resources that will bridge, that will give you a surprise bill at the end of the month. Um, and last but not least, um, and this is something that everybody should do is tag. Um, this is, I put this last to, to put this in your minds um, before I close out this presentation. Um, a lot of uh, what you, a lot of the power in the cost explorer and budgets comes from um, uh, implementing cost allocation tags. And so you can, <clears throat> you can put um, basically like little bits of metadata on uh, taggable resources in your account. And then you can filter down for, um, uh, in the cost explorer for those specific tags, uh, and to see how much those things, uh, those resources are are contributing to your uh, to your costs. Um, and as far as like what uh, tagging strategies look like, I mean, you can break this down into um, uh, categories of uh, technical, financial, um, or ops and automation and security groups uh, within um, uh, within this tag structure. Most of our resources support <coughs> up to 50 tags per resource. So there's a lot of room to play with here. Um, and this will help you categorize all the costs in your account. And so uh, last but not least, you don't necessarily need to do all this by hand. Um, we have a lot of partners um, that can help you out with this. Um, a couple folks like uh, Ronin Cloud and Turbot, Cloud Checker and Cloudability, they all implement all this stuff on top of AWS um, for you. And so uh, Ronin Cloud, I, uh, you should check that out. It's got a really nice um, uh, way to monitor budgets on a project basis. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Cloud Checker as well. Um, they are uh, they're partners of ours, and um, they have really great tools. And that's, that's kind of the way that we scale out ca uh, ca <clears throat> um, uh, capability on AWS through our partners to get some of the cool features uh, that are valuable to uh, to researchers. So um, with that, I'll say thank you and take any questions. Just a quick question about the granularity of costs. So when I was um, exploring using AWS, I wanted to try with 10 samples, 50 samples, 100 samples, and see what the cost was in terms of linearity. The problem I found with that was the costing only seems to update once every 24 hours. And so I was having mm -hmm. to run 10 samples, then wait for the next day, then run 50 samples, etc. Is, is there any way of getting a more granular costing of what has been, you know, for the app per hour or per minute? Um, yeah, you sure. can. So there is an hourly level of granularity for all of your resources down from the API call. Okay. Um, it's a report that you build, um, and you can access it from the But if you use Cost Explorer, it gets updated at least three times a day, um, and that's not a great method for what you're trying to do. Okay. Can I, can I check the answer to the back of my mind? Yeah. Sure, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and maybe a compliment. I mean, there are a bunch of AWS guys here, so if you have questions, you can ask us directly as well. I'm a spot specialist, so if you have questions about spots, so feel free. I'm not a bioinformatics, though. Uh, yeah. So. Olga? Yeah, um, so this is all, it's all a lot of information to when you're first setting up your AWS account, and I do highly recommend either hiring a cloud integrated AWS engineer to help you with this, or Using these services because, um, like the tagging, like all of that tagging, all of the, those things are just. When I was using it, I actually ignored the tagging things because I saw it on the store, so I'm just gonna skip this. Yeah. So it was only once we hired someone, like yeah, and then tag all the instances, like show, tell, tell us which tags to use, and all of that. Like it's a very specialized um, knowledge base, and I'd say don't underestimate um, how much of a learning curve it is. Uh, because as easy as they make it, um, it's uh, all of the things to like, check these costs and do this account management and whatever, like, it's a lot. 
And it, so adding to that, if you have questions about AWS, I highly recommend reaching out to your uh, account manager if you know them. Um, and we're, we're, our tagline is we're customer obsessed. Um, and what we want to do is we want to make sure that you guys are successful. And so reach out to your account manager, your account um, solutions architect, and we will help you no charge uh, to, to try to set up your account um, in the best way that works for you. Um, as far as other mechanisms for uh, implementing the right tags, um, if you figure out a strategy that works once um, and you have infrastructure that you de deploy regularly, um, definitely check out using CloudFormation to automate deployment of that infrastructure and then in, uh, include the tagging within that template so that it comes any infrastructure that comes out of that template that you can uh, that you deploy automatically gets the tags that it needs in order for you to track it in uh, in your budgets. So that way you don't have to manually add the tags after the fact or or, or manually implement um, bring up that infrastructure and add tags. That, that, that's cool, but there is an API to query done their time. Set an API to query the tag explorer. I mean that not yeah. just yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. Any we could also think about how we can approach, or how Nextflow maybe can automate this stuff as well, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I agree. You know, how to take instances, or maybe having uh, a blind yeah. yep. evening, maybe we can broaden the race on how, how much abstraction we can provide. I just got an email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, actually, I can't. I will. I'm happy to talk about that this afternoon. Um, uh, some of the infrastructure that we set up with uh, with Batch. Um, uh, computer environments do support uh, adding tags to the instances it launches, and we can talk more about that later. So, anything else? All right, cool.